So now we will go into Young's experiment two source interference pattern. So, friends, here is the schematic diagram of Young's double slit experiment. Let me make you understand this. So, here is the primary source that we are naming as S. It is the primary source, or we can say incident beam. From here, wavefronts are being generated, and it is the division of wavefronts we are getting two source of same phase difference so from here i have marked with different colors the red ones are we are naming this as s1 and this as s2 so red ones are of s1 and green ones are of s2 and this is the screen that we will be observing the interference pattern in so this is basically the schematic diagram for young's double slit experiment so let me explain this experiment for you. The wavefront from S1 and S2 superimpose on the screen at points where a crest or trough due to one falls or a crest due to other points are being seen by the marks. So these points correspond to the position of bright fringe on the screen and also to the dark fringe on the screen. So where crest meets that is where two waves crest such as like this meets their bright fringes will get formed and where two troughs meet like this there in those region dark fringes will be formed. So that's how we will be observing the bright and dark fringes. So now let me write down for you all the conditions for sustained or permanent interference. So here are the conditions for sustained interference pattern. Let me read it out for you. Two sources, that is the number one point, must be coherent. You all know that these sources that are formed by wavefront division pattern must be coherent number two two sources must lie very close to them that is this distance must be very small why due to the changes of overlapping fringes and number three two sources should be very narrow due to losing of coherence property with increase in width of slit that is this width this slit width must be very narrow or else the coherent property will be lost so now let us jump into the shape of interference fringes and the long derivation remember this derivation is very very important from the examination point of view to derive the shape of interference fringes we need to draw a schematic diagram in the coordinate system and imply the distance and coordinates to the point so let me do that first for you so this is the schematic diagram that we need for the derivation so let us consider a coordinate system that is this one whose origin o is situated at the midpoint between two coherent sources that is these are the two coherent sources s1 and s2 and let the midpoint be the origin point that is considered as o so now we assume this distance to be d and hence the coordinate points will be 0 comma d and this is 0 comma minus d. So if delta is the path difference, if delta be the path difference between the two interferencing waves that is S1 P and s2 p then we can write delta equal to s2 p minus s1 p since s2 p is we are considering as the greater distance therefore we can see from here that s2 p 
is equal to square root of from the coordinate system formulas we can see it is x minus 0 whole square plus y minus minus of d whole square you can see why i am writing this because it is the hypotenuse and we can consider this for the pythagoras theorem so here by replacing the values or by computing we can write it as root over x square plus y plus d whole square similarly we can write is 1p if you see this as a right angle triangle we can write just carefully observe the diagram and you will get to know it will be x minus 0 whole square plus y minus d whole square so finally it will come out as x square plus y minus d whole square so therefore if we just square and subtract that is is 2p square minus is 1p square we will be getting x square plus y plus d whole square minus x square plus y minus d whole square so if we compute all over this we will be getting 4y d similarly if we find delta we know that delta is s2p minus s1p or we can write s2p square equal to delta plus s1p whole square or we can write s2p square equal to just split it out in the formula that is a plus b whole square we can write delta square plus s1p square plus 2 into delta into s1p or we can write s2p square minus s1p square taking this into this side that side of the equal to minus what we are getting if we do delta square only 2 delta s1p will be left here or we can say that 4yd minus delta square because we have got here is 2p square minus s1p square equal to 4yd so we are putting this value as 4yd so 4yd minus delta square becomes equal to 2 delta s1 p we have got this equation now if we square both the sides then what we will get we will get 4y d minus delta square whole square equal to 4 delta square s1 p square so what we are getting here if we split this into formula into a minus b whole square formula we will get 16y square d square plus delta to the power 4 minus 8 delta square y d that is equal to 4 delta square into x square plus y minus d whole square it looks like as if it is very complicated but if you solve this carefully it's only simple concept of mathematics now continuing this so what we are getting here after solving 
और सिक्सटीन वाई स्क्वायर डी स्क्वायर प्लस डेल्टा टू दी पावर फोर माइनस एट डेल्टा स्क्वायर वाई डी इज इक्वल टू फोर डेल्टा स्क्वायर एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस फोर डेल्टा स्क्वायर वाई स्क्वायर प्लस फोर डेल्टा स्क्वायर डी स्क्वायर माइनस एट डेल्टा स्क्वायर वाई इंटू डी और आफ्टर सिंप्लीफिकेशन वील गेट एंड टेकिंग कॉमन वाई स्क्वायर इंटू सिक्सटीन डी स्क्वायर माइनस फोर इंटू डेल्टा स्क्वायर माइनस वट वेयर इज दे फोर एक्स स्क्वायर डेल्टा स्क्वायर एंड इन दिस साइड ऑफ द इक्वल टू वी आर गेटिंग फोर डेल्टा स्क्वायर डी स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा टू दी पावर फोर और अगेन सिंप्लीफाइंग दिस विल बी गेटिंग सिक्सटीन वाई स्क्वायर इंटू डी स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा स्क्वायर बाई फोर माइनस फोर एक्स स्क्वायर डेल्टा स्क्वायर इक्वल टू फोर डेल्टा स्क्वायर डी स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा टू दी पावर फोर और वी विल बी गेटिंग फोर वाई स्क्वायर इंटू डी स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा स्क्वायर बाय फोर माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर डेल्टा स्क्वायर इक्वल टू डेल्टा स्क्वायर डी स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा टू दी पावर फोर बाय फोर अगेन विल बी गेटिंग फोर वाई स्क्वायर इंटू डी स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा स्क्वायर बाय फोर माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर डेल्टा स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा स्क्वायर सॉरी दिस विल बी इक्वल टू डेल्टा स्क्वायर इंटू डी स्क्वायर माइनस डेल्टा स्क्वायर बाय फोर now here is an important step that if we divide we we'll write dividing both sides by this quantity that is 4 delta square into d square minus delta square by 4 so we can write 4 y square by delta square that remains same minus 4x square by 4d square minus delta square that is equal to 1 or finally we can reach in the value y square by delta square by 4 minus x square by d square minus delta square by 4 equal to 1 which is the equation of a hyperbola so the shapes of interferon fringes obtained in young's double slit experiment are hyperbola this is an important derivation from examination point of view